This single view from space holds the answers to two fundamental questions. Just how much of our world is water and what is the layered structure of the land we call home? Let's uncover the facts behind this beauty. From space, one feature dominates all others. What is it? The water. A brilliant, overwhelming blue. The numbers tell a stunning story. 71% of our planet is covered in water, leaving just 29% as land. But here's the catch. 97% of that water is in the salty ocean, undrinkable, and usable for most of our needs. Only 3% is fresh. Let's make this real. Imagine all of Earth's water as 100 drops. 97 drops are salt water. Just 3 drops are fresh. But the story doesn't end there. Of those rare life-giving drops of fresh water, most are locked in glaciers or buried deep underground. That leaves less than a single drop for all the rivers, lakes, and streams we depend on for life itself. So let that sink in. Yes, Earth is the blue planet, but the water that truly sustains us is rare, fragile, and precious. Now we've mapped the water, but what about the rest? What is the 29% of land really? What are we actually standing on? And perhaps the greatest mystery of all, what lies at the bottom of those vast blue oceans? It's time to go deeper. It's time to explore the solid Earth. Scientists classify Earth's interior in two distinct ways. First is by composition, what each layer is made of. Think of this as Earth's ultimate recipe or ingredient list. This model gives us three fundamental layers. First, we have the crust, our planet's thin, solid outer skin. Beneath it lies the mantle, a thick, rocky layer that's rich in minerals. And at the very center is the core, a super hot, dense ball of metal. Now looking at this diagram, you'll notice the crust is drawn very thick. In reality, it's incredibly thin. We have to exaggerate it just to see it. To get a true sense of scale, think of a hard-boiled egg. See that shell? It's thin, fragile, and easy to crack. That's what the Earth's crust is like. The firm egg white represents the massive mantle, making up most of the planet's volume. And the yolk at the very center represents the dense core. Now there's a second equally important way to see our planet, by mechanics. How the layers behave and move under stress. This is less about ingredients and more about Earth's dynamic personality. This framework divides the planet into five key mechanical layers. The lithosphere is the rigid, brittle outer shell, comprising the crust and the very top of the mantle. This is Earth's tectonic plate layer. Below it lies the stenosphere, a hot, soft region of the upper mantle that flows slowly over time. Next is the mesosphere, the strong, rigid layer of the lower mantle. Deeper still is the outer core, a liquid layer of swirling iron and nickel whose motion generates Earth's magnetic field. And at the very center is the inner core, a solid, dense ball of iron forged by immense pressure. On our journey today, we're going to zoom in on the foundation of everything on the surface. The complex relationship between the rigid lithosphere and the flowing asthenosphere beneath it. Beneath our feet, the story of our planet's surface begins with its thin, rocky skin, the crust. But this crust isn't all the same. There are two distinct types, continental crust that forms our continents and oceanic crust that makes up the seafloor. The most obvious difference is their scale. Continental crust is a thick foundation ranging from 25 to 70 kilometers deep. But oceanic crust is a thin shell, just 7 to 10 kilometers thick. This drastic difference in thickness comes down to what they are made of. The continents are built from granite, a lighter, buoyant rock rich in silica. The seafloor, however, is made of basalt, a darker, heavier rock rich in iron and magnesium. This is why continental crust has a lower density, allowing it to ride high while dense oceanic crust sinks low. It also explains the age gap. Some continents contain rock nearly 4 billion years old while the seafloor is young, constantly recycled, and it almost never gets older than 200 million years. 
This thin variable crust is our home. Every mountain, valley, and city is built upon it. And beneath it lies the upper mantle. It's the powerful interaction between the crust and the upper mantle that shapes our entire world. And that's precisely where we're headed next. But to truly understand that power, we need a new perspective, a mechanical one. This isn't about what these layers are made of, but how they move. From this angle, something remarkable happens. The cross and the very top of the upper mantle, despite being different materials, are locked together. They behave as a single rigid shell. Geologists have a special name for this unified rocky layer, the lithosphere. The word comes from the Greek lithos, meaning rock. So the lithosphere is literally our planet's rock sphere. But here's the crucial part. This rocky shell isn't a continuous hole. It's fractured into enormous moving slabs called tectonic plates, a jigsaw puzzle covering the entire globe. And what allows these rigid plates to move? The secret lies just below. We now enter the stenosphere. Its name means weak sphere. This part of the mantle is hotter and softer. Though still solid, the rock here is under so much heat and pressure that it can bend and flow over millennia. Wrapping your head around the idea of solid rock that can flow is a challenge. So let's use a delicious analogy. Chocolate. Imagine a chocolate bar straight from the fridge. It's cold, hard, and rigid. When you try to bend it, it snaps with clean edges. This is the lithosphere. Earth's solid, brittle outer shell broken into tectonic plates. Now take that same chocolate bar and warm it gently in the sun. You don't melt it into a liquid, you just make it soft and pliable. It's still solid, but now it can bend and deform slowly instead of snapping. This is the stenosphere, solid rock, softened by immense heat and pressure, allowing it to flow incredibly slowly over millions of years. So picture it, the rigid cold lithosphere floats and moves on top of the warm, gooey asthenosphere. This is the fundamental engine, the simple relationship. The rigid layer floating on the soft, flowing one facilitates a planet-wide process. It's the system that enables continents to drift on their slow-motion journeys, allows ocean to open and close, and transmits the force that crumples and cracks the ground. This interaction is the direct source of the power that sculpts our world. Volcanoes that forge new land, mountain ranges that scrape the sky, and earthquakes that release immense energy. The engine is running, the motion is constant. In our next lesson, we'll step to the surface to see what happens when these forces collide and how this slow motion dance creates the world we live in. The real drama is just getting started. This is G. And I'll see you in the next lesson.